We physicists have waited a hundred years since 1916 for this photograph. Some concepts are simply difficult to comprehend, even with a smartphone and Google at our disposal. That's where Michio Kaku comes in. Although locating black holes is challenging, finding their contents is even more challenging. But now, researchers have figured out what a black hole is made of, and they have even taken a picture of it. What takes place inside a black hole? Where do black holes lead to? And why does this newest discovery have scientists scrambling for answers? Join us in this video as we take a look at Michio Kaku's breakthrough discovery with black holes. Not too long ago, astronomers from all across the world were raising champagne glasses in celebration of their most recent discovery. The once laughable Hubble Space Telescope finally captured its most elusive prey, a black hole. However, the discovery of the astrophysical equivalent of the Holy Grail also reignites a long-simmering argument within the physics community. What lies on the other side of a black hole? Will someone who made the mistake of falling into a black hole be crushed by its powerful gravity, as most scientists think, or will they be launched into a parallel universe or reappear in a different period? In order to answer this challenging question, physicists are revealing one of the strangest and most intriguing chapters in contemporary physics. The prospect of wormholes, white holes, time travel, and perhaps the tenth dimension are just a few of the combustible notions they must traverse. Black holes may number over 100 million in the Milky Way, yet it is incredibly challenging to find these ravenous monsters. How are black holes created? It is anticipated that black holes form through two different paths. They develop when huge stars die because, according to the first pathway, they are stellar corpses. When stars with birth masses greater than 8 to 10 times that of the Sun run out of hydrogen, they burst and die, leaving behind a very compact, dense entity called a black hole. Its mass is on the order of a few times that of the Sun, and the ensuing black hole is known as a stellar mass black hole. Simply explained, a black hole is an enormous dead star whose gravity is so strong that even light cannot escape from it, hence the name. These gluttonous creatures are among the most interesting objects in space. They are some of the oddest and most interesting objects in space. Because of their enormous density and powerful gravitational pull, not even light can elude them. Lower birth mass stars typically leave behind a neutron star or a white dwarf instead of a black hole. The direct collapse of gas is another method that black holes can originate. And this process is predicted to produce more powerful black holes with masses that can range from 1,000 times the mass of the Sun to even 100,000 times the mass of the Sun. It is thought that this pathway operated in the early cosmos and generated more large black hole seeds since it avoids the typical star formation process. Carl Schwarzschild discovered the black hole theory in 1915, and it was discovered that these regions, known as black holes, produce an extreme distortion of space and a tear in the fabric of space-time. At the time, it wasn't known if these corresponded to actual celestial bodies. Black holes were proven to be real and should exist over time when other signs of stellar death, such as neutron stars observed as pulsars, were discovered. Cygnus X1 was the first black hole to be discovered. Do black holes die? Although black holes don't actually die, they are thought to eventually slowly evaporate over very long timescales. Because of their extreme gravity, black holes expand by absorbing neighboring materials. According to Stephen Hawking, black holes might also emit energy and progressively contract. According to quantum theory, virtual particles constantly pop into and out of existence. This results in the appearance of a particle and an accompanying antiparticle. They can, however, also unite once more and vanish once more. Strange things can occur when this procedure takes place close to a black hole's event horizon. The particle-antiparticle pair may escape gravity and plunge into the black hole, while the other particle could fly off into space rather than existing for a brief while before annihilating one another. The theory predicts that this trickle of escaping particles will eventually cause the black hole to slowly dissipate over extremely long periods. We are thinking about timescales that are far much longer than the age of our universe. The Event Horizon Telescope EHT team published the first black hole image ever taken in 2019. 
while the telescope was studying the event horizon, or the region past which nothing can escape from a black hole, the EHT discovered the black hole at the heart of galaxy M87. The graphic depicts the abrupt loss of photons, light particles. Now that astronomers are aware of what a black hole looks like, it opens up an entirely new field of study into them. The new image reveals significantly more information about the black hole because polarized light waves differ in orientation and brightness from unpolarized light waves. The image makes it obvious that the ring of the black hole is magnetized since polarization is a sign of magnetic fields. In addition, scientists unveiled the historic first image of Sagittarius A asterisk, the supermassive black hole at the heart of our galaxy in May 2022. What do black holes look like? The singularity, together with the outer and inner event horizons, are the three layers of black holes. A black hole's event horizon is the area surrounding its mouth beyond which light cannot travel. A particle cannot depart the event horizon once it has done so. Across the event horizon, gravity remains constant. The singularity, or one point in space-time where the mass of the black hole is concentrated, is the area inside a black hole where the object's mass is located. Black holes are invisible to scientists, unlike stars and other celestial phenomena. As gas and dust are sucked into the massive objects, black holes must release radiation that astronomers must instead detect. However, because of the dense gas and dust that surround them, supermassive black holes that are at the galactic center may get obscured, obscuring their telltale emissions. Sometimes, instead of being pulled into the black hole's mouth as matter is attracted toward it, matter ricochets off the event horizon and is flung forth. It produces bright jets of matter moving at nearly relativistic speeds. These strong jets can be observed from a vast distance, despite the fact that the black hole itself is not visible. Even after the photographs were collected, it took two years of investigation to fully analyze the EHT's image of a black hole in M87. This is so that the incredible amount of data produced by the Partnership of Telescopes which spans across numerous observatories globally, can't be transferred via the internet. Theoretically, if you fell into a black hole, you would be stretched out like spaghetti by gravity, but you would die before you reached the singularity. However, a 2012 study revealed that due to quantum phenomena, the event horizon would behave much like a wall of fire, instantaneously killing you. However, using Einstein's gravity equations, New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr provided the best description of a spinning black hole in 1963, but his solution has a peculiar aspect. According to this theory, if a person were to fall into a black hole, they might be sucked down a passageway dubbed the Einstein-Rosen Bridge and sent shooting out a white hole in another universe. According to Kerr, a rotating black hole would not collapse into a point, but rather into a ring of fire the fast-spinning ring would be prevented from collapsing by centrifugal forces. On the other side of the Einstein-Rosen bridge, in a parallel reality, a space probe that was launched right through the ring might really survive unharmed and survive. This wormhole could link distant regions of the same universe or possibly two parallel universes. According to Michio Kaku, thinking of Alice through the looking glass is the easiest way to picture a Kerr wormhole. Anyone passing through the looking glass would be immediately teleported to Wonderland, a place where animals would speak in riddles. The Kerr ring's rim and the looking glass's rim are the same. Anyone passing through the Kerr ring could be sent back in time or possibly to another dimension. We now have two universes connected by the looking glass, much like two Siamese twins linked at the hip. Some physicists have pondered the possibility that black holes or wormholes could one day be exploited to travel quickly to another area of the universe or even to travel back in time, enabling the heroic deeds of Star Wars. We do warn that there are detractors, though. The skeptics acknowledge that thousands of wormhole solutions to Einstein's equations have now been discovered, so they cannot be readily discounted as the ravings of crackheads. However, they draw attention to the possibility that wormholes are unstable, or that the powerful radiation and subatomic forces around the wormhole's entry would kill anyone who ventured to enter. Physicists have started spirited discussions over these wormholes. Because Einstein's calculations fail near the center of black holes or wormholes, where radiation and subatomic forces might be powerful enough to collapse the entry, this debate cannot be resolved. Einstein's theory only accounts for gravity, 
It does not account for the quantum forces that control radiation and subatomic particles. What is required is a theory that simultaneously incorporates gravity and the quantum theory of radiation. In order to address the issue of quantum black holes, according to Michio Kaku, a theory of everything is required. One of the greatest accomplishments of 20th century science is that all physical laws can be encapsulated in just two formalizations. One, Einstein's theory of gravity, which provides a cosmic description of the extremely large galaxies, black holes, and the Big Bang. And two, the quantum theory, which provides a microscopic description of the extremely small, the microcosm of subatomic particles and radiation. The biggest irony, and perhaps one of nature's cosmic comedies, is that they appear to be utterly dissimilar. Even the best physicists in history, such as Einstein and Heisenberg, have been unable to combine these into one. The cosmos is described by the two theories in their respective domains, the cosmic and the microscopic, using various mathematical techniques and physical theories. Thankfully, we already have a contender for this hypothesis. In actuality, it is the only contender. Numerous competing ideas have all been found to be inconsistent. To overcome the issue of quantum wormholes, a theory of radiation and gravity must be combined. This theory is known as superstring theory, and it does so almost painlessly. The strongest contender for such an equation, in Michio Kaku's opinion, is string field theory, which he co-founded. By positing that subatomic particles are really resonances or vibrations of a microscopic string, the superstring theory claims to be able to explain the puzzling quantum laws of subatomic physics. Similar to how the vibrations of a violin string translate into musical notes, those of a superstring translate into natural particles. The universe then becomes a string symphony. The fact that a string warps the space-time fabric as it passes through time, creating black holes, wormholes, and other strange solutions to Einstein's equations, is an added benefit. Thus, the superstring theory brings together both the Einsteinian theory and quantum physics in a single appealing vision, 10 dimensions of the universe. Superstrings can only vibrate in 10 dimensions, which is an odd property of them. The fact that there is more room in 10 dimensions for Einstein's theory of gravity and subatomic physics is one of the reasons why it can unite the known forces of the cosmos. A normal four-dimensional theory is too small to fit all the forces into one mathematical framework, which is in part why earlier attempts to unify the forces of nature failed. In a Japanese tea garden, where carp spend their entire lives floating on the bottom of a small pond, Michio Kaku suggests that we might imagine higher dimensions. Carp have only a hazy knowledge of the world beneath the surface. For a carp scientist, there are only two dimensions in the universe, length and width. There is no concept of height. In actuality, they are unable to think of a third dimension outside of the pond. For them, the word up has no significance. If we were to abruptly transport them from their two-dimensional realm into hyperspace, that is, our world, imagine the pain they would feel. The surface of their pond, though, ripples when it rains. They are unable to comprehend the third dimension, although they can clearly see the waves moving across the pond's surface. The ripples from these higher dimensions can also be seen when they vibrate, even if we on Earth cannot see them. This hypothesis holds that the fifth dimensional vibrations that make up light are all there is. We can simply accept larger and more forces, even nuclear weapons, by introducing higher dimensions. In other words, we can accommodate greater forces the more dimensions we have. But a common objection to this hypothesis is that we don't observe these greater dimensions in the lab. At the present moment, instead of 10, four numbers, length, width, depth, and time, can adequately characterize every occurrence in the cosmos, from the smallest subatomic decay to exploding galaxies. In response to this critique, many physicists think that the cosmos at the time of the Big Bang was indeed completely ten dimensions, albeit they are unable to demonstrate this claim just yet. Six of the ten dimensions didn't curl up into a ball small enough to be seen until after the instant of creation. This notion actually relates to the moment of creation, when the complete potential of space-time in its ten dimensions was made manifest. Unsurprisingly, the ten the dimensional superstrings mathematics is both breathtakingly beautiful and brutally complicated, and they have shocked the mathematics community. This theory has allowed for the development of wholly new mathematical fields. Unfortunately, no one is currently capable of solving the quantum black hole puzzle. 
Teams of intrepid physicists are still working to solve the superstring theory problem, despite the huge stakes involved. Over 5,000 papers have already been produced on the topic. Substantial development was reported last year. There have been several distinct claims made by physicists that the issue of a quantum black hole can be fully resolved by string theory. The computation could only be done in two dimensions, not ten, because of how incredibly challenging it was. So that's where we are right now. Therefore, it's still a little early to buy wormhole tickets to travel to the next galaxy.